It's Saturday, September 21st, and I am back in Killarney. Well, actually, I'm not in Killarney. I met Wagawa Lodge, which is about 10 kilometers outside of the park borders. And I'm launching from this lodge, and we'll be paddling through Charleston and Fruid Lakes before making my way to the park border. And what brings me to the park this time is the Nelly Lake Loop. For me, this will be three nights and four days. First night spent on Grace, second night spent on Nelly Lake, and third night spent on Murray. And this is a trip that I've always wanted to do, but for whatever reason, it just hasn't happened. So I am so thrilled to be finally here to accomplish a trip that I've been dreaming about for years and years. And you know how it is with us older handsome guys, you know, aging, you know, first it's your knees and then it's your hip. And the reality is, you know, one of these days, none of us will be able to do the trips that we once did. So for me, it was important to get out and do this trip before it's too late. And I just hope that <laughs> that day doesn't come for me today, tomorrow, or the next day, because I have a lot of portaging to do, starting off with a 1.7 kilometer into Grace later today. So I better get started on that before the rain starts and uh, get moving along these lakes. I've just put in from the lodge and the put-in deposits you onto Gosh, I don't know if it's a river or a creek or just a gap between two islands, but it looks lovely. It's just a winding, narrow swamp, really, with a clear paddling route straight down the middle. I think it's lovely here. Wow, this creek opens right up onto Charleston Lake. Pretty lake. I'm battling a bit of a headwind here on Charleston but it's about to become a broadside wind as I round this corner, uh, round this bend rather, and head south towards Fruid Lake. I might find myself in the lee once I do this. Just rounding the corner here from Charleston Lake into Fruid Lake, and I'll be paddling until the very end of it. I don't know, five or six kilometers maybe? continuing to make my way down Fruit Lake and it's quite narrow through here. It's lovely actually. I do have a headwind and I could see I could see this lake really channeling the wind on certain days but today's not one of those days or at least not yet and just a couple of motorboats, fishermen here and there and the cottages that populated Charleston Lake appear to have vanished thus far on Fruit Lake and in the distance the Lacloche Mountains. Just a beautiful paddle on one of the grayest days I can recall, but still no rain so far. So that's a bit of good news, but it feels like it's coming, unfortunately. And it's takeout time. Making my way along the 1700 meter portage that leads into Grace. And so far flat, very green, very wet, and very slippery but I'm doing it in two carries. I have my uh, main bag and my camera bag on this carry, and the second carry will be the canoe with the blue barrel and the paddles. 
So far, so good. And the rain's held off except for a little sprinkle as I was unloading the canoe. I'm now standing on the shores of Grace Lake. I finished both my carries, uh, both which I did in one go, which was a great feeling. First carry was my camera bag and my main pack. Second carry was the canoe with the food barrel, which was considerably more unpleasant than the first carry. Uh, because it was raining on the first carry and because I did bring my camera gear across on that first carry, I was unable to do any filming, but I saw lots of things I wanted to film. Now that I've completed the second carry, the rain has stopped, or should I say the mist has stopped. It was really more of a misty rain than a, than a downpour, uh, but it's dry. And I'm now gonna walk the portage for the third time, most of the way back to the beginning to capture some waterfalls, some mosses, some mushrooms, of course, some stumps, and uh, just other interesting things that I earmarked along the way on both of the carries I did earlier. So that's the plan. Once that's done, I'm gonna head across this lake to site 201, I believe, which will be my site for the night. Yeah, it feels good to have all that carrying done. Ooh. Just taking a chocolate chip cookie break after having spent about two hours walking back across this portage filming different things I saw along the way on my carry-in that I wasn't able to because of rain. And now I'm sitting here staring at out over the ever-changing Grace Lake that's gone from sort of a misty cloud into a sun-splashed misty cloud I guess. But it is 4.30 and darkness will be coming soon. Tomorrow is the last day of summer and I should probably make my way across the lake and get set up at camp so I don't get stuck setting up in the dark. Anyway, as soon as I'm done this cookie and 
finished up some water, I'm going to hop in the canoe and make my way. It's a tight little campsite here. Not a lot of tent pads. Decent fire pit. And the tent pads are way back in the woods here. Here I've got my tiny little coffin tent, I call it. It's big enough for one person and one inflatable pad, but certainly not big enough for a cot. Got my tarp set up and then my dry bag here just airing out a little bit. Well, I'm all settled in at the campsite. I've got my tent set up, my tarp set up, I've collected some wood, I filtered some water, and I've dug through the blue barrel to get my dinner out for later tonight. For this trip, I decided not to bring a, a gas burning stove or an alcohol stove, I'm trying to save on weight. So I just brought the stick stove, which would be fine for rehydrating my dehydrated meals. And I've got some sticks and some tinder and some twigs and some birch bark to get that baby going. And I'll be starting that up probably in about 15 minutes at 7 p.m. But until then, I'm just going to relax a little bit and enjoy what's in my cup. And for inquiring minds, that would be tequila with a splash of triple sec. But when seven o'clock rolls around, there'll be no more time to mess around because uh, darkness will fall very quickly on this lake because we are surrounded by high bluffs and I can already see the light slowly uh, disappearing from the hilltops as the sun gets lower in the sky. So my feet are gonna go up for 15 minutes and then I'm gonna get started on dinner and to bed early tonight after my hard earned day. Dinner is ready. What I did was I rehydrated the beef in water, a little bit more water than you would ordinarily use to rehydrate a meal where you're looking to get measurements precise. But the leftover water keeps the flavor, uh, the flavor from the beef, which has uh, some spices and fish sauce and soy sauce and all other kinds of good stuff dehydrated with it. And then I simply add in mashed potatoes until all that water gets mopped up. And then I throw in a dollop of butter and uh, you get basically something that tastes amazing, but looks like dog food. So I'm going to finish this up tonight, top my cup up, maybe have a fire, and I'll be heading to bed very early. So thanks so much for coming along on day one. We hope to see you on day two. Good morning from under the tarp. And it's around 7.30 right now, and when I got up 20 minutes ago, I could barely see my hand in front of my face. It is a bowl of soup at this campsite this morning, and everything is wet. Everything under the tarp is wet. Everything in my tent is wet. It's like, it's like the fog moved in last night, like a wet sponge, and just kind of made everything damp. And just to confirm that it didn't rain last night, I looked at my canoe, and there's like tiniest bit of water. But you're back here in the woods, the wind blows, and you know, it sounds like it's pouring rain. Anyway, finally got the stick stove started this morning. Everything has been wet, and I had this little tiny piece of birch bark that didn't want to light, but finally it did. And coffee is next up on the list. And, I mean, I can't see any of the islands in front of the campsite. I can't see anything. It is just a soupy morning. Anyway, I'm not in a hurry to go anywhere today, so I'm going to get a couple of cups on and just hopefully watch the day clear up.
it's around 8 o'clock now. Been up for a little over an hour, and uh, I have to say the weather looks exactly like it did when I woke up an hour ago. Pure soup, opaque as can be. Can't see any of the islands or anything in the middle of Grace. So I think the plan is just to chill out here, keep the stick stove burning to keep a bit of the chill off. Work on coffee number two, and uh, after coffee number two is done, I'll start strategizing about how this day is going to unfold. I have about a two kilometer paddle and then a two kilometer portage. So I'd rather not do that in the rain and uh, I'm hopeful that things are going to burn off or clear up before uh, the day gets too advanced. Well, it looks like the morning is finally clearing. I can see the islands in the middle of the lake, but I still can't see the mountains in the background. 9.30 now, so I'm gonna keep an eye on things and probably start packing up for around 10. It's just hard to leave this site right now. Beautiful. For breakfast this morning, it's just gonna be some dried apples and some raisins and some oatmeal. I eat this cold and just add a bit of water and I've also got some granola that I'll uh, put on at the end. I like the crunch so I don't mix it in usually with the oatmeal I'm making. What a beautiful and strange morning it's been. Uh, the cloudscapes, the fog, the mist at the far end of the lake has just been hypnotizing. I must have put my camera away 10 times only to pull it out again and just say, oh, I gotta get this shot, I have to get that shot. But it really is amazing the way the whole lake has just sort of opened up uh, over the course of the past few hours. But the wet, I mean, it is, <laughs> I feel like I'm in the Amazon. I've never been camping and been so wet without, I think, a drop of rain falling. So that's a first, but uh, it is what it is. Okay, I'm mostly packed up and I'm about to hop in the canoe and start making my way down Grace Lake to the end uh, and start on the portage that will take me into Nelly. I should be at the portage by noon and hopefully down the portage by two. And the weather forecast uh, for later today and tomorrow looks better than now, so hopefully I'll have a chance to dry stuff out. Okay, better hit the lake. So long, Grace Lake campsite. Time for me to head into Nelly. So I'm just making my way along Grace now. It's about a two kilometer paddle and then the two kilometer portage into Nelly, where I'll be staying tonight.
Ooh, I'm just at the takeout from the Grace Lake Portage on the Nelly Lake Portage, and I've just brought all my gear up the hill uh, from the takeout, which is quite steep. And I'm just going to go through some of the gear now and get everything collapsed and sorted so I'm able to do this portage in a tidy two carries. All right, two kilometers, here we come. I'm back for my second carry, but I did not make it to the end of the portage with the canoe and the blue barrel. I walked for 25 minutes and then saw the most inviting rest for my canoe. This fallen log was just perfect, so I ended up just setting the canoe there and turning around and coming back. There's a couple of reasons for that. The first 20 minutes of this portage is just a staircase of uphills. In fact, sometimes you go downhill before you come uphill. And none of them are super steep, but they are very taxing on the legs. And I think I've got to the top of them all. And my legs were just feeling a little rubbery. And that's a good way to injure yourself. So as much as I'd love to have the bragging rights, not this time. I left it there and came back for this load. Anyway, this load I'm pretty sure I'll be able to take to the end. It's a lot more comfortable. Anyway, it's a lovely portage if you like uphills, uh, but it is very clear, so can't complain about too many obstacles. Just a bit of moose muck along the way, and I just walk through that because walking around it is usually more grief than it's worth. Well, I was wrong. That was just as difficult with these two packs as it was with the canoe. Maybe it was the cumulative effect of doing those hills twice, but thank goodness that is done, and look where I am. Hello, beautiful. Hello, canoe. All right, a little pit stop for water, and then I'm gonna be on my way. Whew. Hello, Nelly Lake. It is very nice to meet you. Pushing off into Nelly now, and it looks every bit as beautiful as Grace with the high quartzite hills and the autumn colors starting to peek through. And I believe that is my campsite dead ahead. Ah, this is Nelly Lake proper. And my campsite, I have just paddled past. This will be home sweet home for the night up here. Just gonna take a little walk around the campsite before I unload to make sure I take my gear where it needs to go. But there's the canoe and up here is the campsite and it looks pretty decent. A little exposed maybe, but I haven't checked out the woods yet. There is the fire pit. And over here might be where the tent goes. And this is Carmichael Lake, the little pond of a lake that I launched onto from the portage. And the portage is just straight across the bay there. I found a little tent pad uh, set back in the woods a bit, and I think that's where I will set up the coffin. Well, it's nice to be finally set up at the campsite. I've got the tarp and the tent both set up, and I've put some clothes out to dry, although the humidity is still quite high. There's a bit of a breeze uh, out in the point there, which hopefully will help uh, wick some of the moisture out of uh, everything, honestly. Um, but, you know, since I've started this trip, it has just been a cloud fest, and uh, the soupy weather yesterday on Grace Lake was, uh, was a lot. I mean, I'll take rain over that kind of uh, foggy, soupy mist any day. It just got into every little pocket that it possibly could. So hopefully this breeze will help dry some stuff out. And tomorrow we're supposed to have sun, which will be very welcome because I really do feel like I've been camping under a shadow since I started. And, you know, these hills and the changing colors really do need light in order to really pop. Anyway, I'm going to fire up the stick stove and get myself a hot cup of miso soup and then uh, 
find something a little more adult to pour into my cup afterwards. Right around six o'clock now, and uh, I am completely unmotivated to do anything after today's workout. But I will get moving shortly as soon as I'm done my soup, and uh, it looks like the rain may have just stopped. I'm under the tarp now, and had to come in because the rain was starting to moisten things. Uh, but the wind has also died down, so hopefully this is what tonight's weather is going to be as we transition, supposedly, to nicer weather tomorrow. Although, the forecast did say there might be some rain overnight. Anyway, not a problem either way. But I do have to go get some wood, so I'm going to get started on that just as soon as I'm done this. seven o'clock and this water is just taking forever to boil but that's mostly my fault I've been distracted just running around camp and trying to do some shooting and tidying up and I keep forgetting to feed the fire but this hardwood is burning magnificently and oh the boils just come on uh, tonight's dinner is gonna be craft dinner and uh, nothing fancy I will add some tuna and some butter and some cheese and I'm gonna call it a night hoping to get things tidied up by about 8 p.m. so I can finally chill out it's been a fairly relentless day uh, despite the fact I didn't travel very far. Um, it's just been busy. You know how it is. You're camping, you're doing stuff, and uh, when you're alone, you do it all. Anyway, I'm going to get the KD in here and start on dinner. Well, day two was quite the day. You know, waking up in that soggy soup bowl of a lake wasn't my first choice of weather. And, you know, all day cloudy with bits of spitting rain in between, not a speck of sunshine along the way, was also not my first choice of weather. But all things taken together, what a mood this place provided today. Um, almost a fall feeling, <laughs> you know. I think today's the last day of summer, so maybe that's appropriate. But I'm so glad to have come out and challenged myself to do this trip. It's just everything I expected and more. My dad, he, he got cancer at age 57. That's only two years out for me. And in some possible world, you know, I'm that guy, cancer at 57, what then? And the funny thing about aging is that you don't think about it, and then one day, it's all you think about. <laughs> but it's good, it lights a match under you, and maybe incentivizes you to get those things done before it's too late. Anyway. I think I'm going to toss some more wood on this fire and pour myself the first adult drink of the day and call it a night. I'm pooped and I want to make the most of tomorrow. Thanks for coming along on day two. Hope to see you on day three. Good morning on day three. And last night, just after I went to bed, the rain started and it rained all night. On and off, but hard at times and pitter patter at other times. But the wind, oh my goodness, the wind was insane last night. And in fact, even this morning, the wind is, well, as you can see, like gusty as can be. And I don't think this wind is gonna allow me to paddle down Nelly Lake, which is really unfortunate because the plan was to get up early today and paddle down Nelly return to this campsite, and then I actually have to backtrack about 500 meters to get to the portage that I need to do today. So unfortunately, there will be no trip down Nelly Lake, but I might take a peek around the corner on my way out and then 
backtrack to get to this 1.3 kilometer portage. I've just left my campsite and I'm heading out to Nelly Lake just to take a peek down the barrel of it. I can see it's white capping out there. There's just no way I'm venturing all the way out onto it. But let's go take a look. Ah, these waters look blue, blue. Almost like the color of oil. Okay, Nelly Lake. I'm sorry I won't be traveling your length today, but you are beautiful. There she is. But I can see it's white capping ahead, and already I feel like there's boat waves everywhere, but it's actually just from wind. So I'm gonna round back into Carmichael Bay and make my way to the portage. See you, Nelly. Feels good to be heading back into the relative calm of Carmichael Bay. It was nice to see Nelly, but there was a moment there where a gust came and, you know, when you're not expecting it, it's, it reminds you, you're just a leaf on the water. And, <laughs> yeah. Making my way through the Narrows back into Carmichael Lake from Nelly. On the right is the campsite I stayed at last night. And Carmichael Lake is just a tiny little pond of a lake but I'll be heading to the end of it to get to the 1.3 kilometer notch portage. Well, that was a bit of work, but uh, portage is here dead ahead. Whew, in that tiny little lake, wind's coming from all directions at you. Glad to be across it. I made it to the Portage de Murray and I've got 1300 meters ahead of me so I'm going to get started on that now. I'm going to start with the two packs and then return for the canoe and the blue barrel. Cute little creek down here. First carry into Murray Lake is complete, and that's a challenging portage. It's got everything. It's got hills, it's got swamp, it's got tight spots. Um, getting through with the canoe is going to require a little bit of a uh, Jenga, but I'll work it out. Anyway, about 25 minutes to do the first carry, heading back for the second. Just taking a little break uh, along my second carry. I'm about 22 minutes in, and there's a very steep part ahead, and I just wanted to tackle that with fresh legs. So gonna stop for a little bit of water and maybe an oatmeal cookie and then finish up this portage and make my way out to campsite on Murray Lake. I'm coming up to a steep section that um, I'm not sure if I'm, if I'm going to carry the canoe down or if I'm going to slide the canoe down on its belly because it rained all night and pine needles everywhere. I guess the wind blew them off and you've got a slippery carpet of pine needles on top of wet soil so I got to be careful had a couple of near misses when I took the first load across and I prefer not to fall with the canoe in my head I've done that before not fun 
I'm at the top of the steepest part of this portage and I'm not sure if I should try to carry this down or if I should just try to slide it down but this is what I'm looking at Whew. oh my goodness well I accomplished that without killing myself but uh, I think I used about every bit of strength in my legs just to stay vertical and the canoe's at such an angle I mean it's just digging into your shoulders but I'm now on flat ground and it's fairly much pretty much clear sailing until the put-in so that's some good news but I'm gonna focus on my portage now and put away this silly camera portage into Murray is complete and you know of all the portages I've done on this loop I would say this is probably the most challenging just uh, the change in elevation all the bed of pine needles over top of the wet soil wet roots and in some areas uh, challenging to get the canoe through just you know not quite 16 feet worth of maneuverability but I did it I'm here and I'm about to head over to my campsite on Murray and get set up for the rest of the day here is the campsite on Murray Lake and it looks like there might be a takeout over to the left Oh, what a beautiful beach to take out on. I'm all settled at my Murray Lake campsite, and the campsite honestly isn't much to look at. There's barely a tent pad up at the main area, and the privy is so far away from the main area that they've actually got two washroom signs in succession, just in case you lose hope after passing the first sign. But the views, the views from this campsite make all of this worthwhile. Uh, the view to what I will call Murphy's Rock, just across the bay from me, is just spectacular. And the colors are still coming. I mean, probably not even halfway there yet, but just to sit and look out over those beautiful colors, it's just gorgeous. And to finally have some sunlight after two days of basically gray skies is also just another small miracle. Anyway, now that I'm mostly set up, I've got my tent, or rather sleeping bag, drying out on a bit of a tree in front of the campsite because a lot of my stuff is still damp from night one and night two didn't help either with all the rain. So next step for me is to pour an adult beverage, put up my feet and take in more of these beautiful sights and sounds. about 5 p.m. and camp's been set up for at least two hours so I've just been walking around gathering some firewood doing some shooting and just taking in this like uh, the, the breeze is blowing directly at me which is making for just amazing waves on the water I mean it's it's like the whole world's coming at you um, but the downside of it is it's chilly and it's breezy and you know after a while you get a little tired of the wind also I'm in shade and the far shore is completely covered in sun so I think it's gonna be getting cooler here sooner than later and the winds tonight I think are supposed to stay high and tomorrow they're gonna to change slightly to east northeast and that should still be in my favor for the paddle out because I am heading west uh, but we'll have to see anyway uh, I'm gonna think about dinner in the next little while I'm not really in a hurry to do anything I might pull up a chair again and just stare out and take in some more of the sun splashed far shore before it disappears and then uh, think about lighting a fire and getting some dinner in my belly but it's gonna be a pretty simple night here because I have an early push off tomorrow
Last night, right before I was going to make dinner, uh, there was a game plan change. I just couldn't get that stick stove to get hot enough to give me a consistent boil last night. So I decided instead to make the beef dish uh, for a second night because that really benefits from a slow simmer, which is exactly what the stick stove offered up last night in the middle of that hurricane. Um, so tonight I am having the craft dinner and man, I never eat this at home, but I love it in the back country. And I've got the old cheddar kind. I'm just putting in some butter, some salt and pepper and that cheesy stuff. And I'm calling that dinner. I had a tuna packet I was gonna add, but I'm not feeling it. So I'm just gonna dive into this meal and call it dinner. And then I think I'm gonna fire up that fire and uh, get to bed early tonight because I like to do an early push off tomorrow before any adverse winds can come up. And I think the winds are supposed to be fairly high over the next 24 hours, or at least fairly consistent. So that's the plan. Eat dinner, chill out, have a cup of something, and then hit the hay early. Good morning from day four. It's around 10 to six right now. And I've been up since about 4.30. I'm on coffee number two. And I keep waiting for daylight to arrive so I can start packing up. But I mean, it is it is pitch black out here right now. If it wasn't for this little tiny light over here, uh, I'd be invisible. Anyway, today's the last day. And the plan is to pack up as soon as daylight appears and start making my way west down Howree Creek. And I was hoping to beat the wind but at 3.55 this morning, my tent shook, and it was the wind. And uh, it's calmed down a bit, but it's still quite gusty. So I'm hoping that the wind will at least be in my favor when I push off shortly. Uh, but as soon as I've got a bit of daylight, I'm just going to pack everything up and start making my way down the creek. I launched about half an hour ago at 7 a.m., and I'm now on Howree Creek. And about two minutes before I launched, the skies opened up. So it's been nonstop rain. And that's fine, except in reach, in reach weather tells me it's supposed to be a beautiful sunny day. And I just wonder how they keep getting it so consistently wrong. But no matter, I am paddling through my absolute favorite type of condition. And that is, well, minus the rain, that is paddling through creeks. And I love the winding, twisting nature. I love how up close and personal you are to everything along the riverbank. And I love how around every corner, uh, there's something new. And you, and you don't know what it is until you lay eyes on it. It's a lot different feeling than paddling across a big lake and just watching the far shore slowly get closer. I think this might be the portage ahead. I think it's about a 300 meter or so, and it takes me around some rapids according to the map. Yep, here she is. I completed the first carry of the portage. It's just 200 meters, and I'll tell you, 200 meters has never seemed so short after days of kilometers of portaging. And it's a very straightforward portage, although at the end there is a bit of waiting. Uh, okay, so I'm back with the second load now, and after that, it's just paddling to the takeout. Last carry on the last portage of this trip is now complete. And all that's left to do is to paddle the remaining length of Howry Creek and then work my way across the lakes uh, to get back to uh, the lodge. So that's what I'm going to do now. And the rain, well, it's raining. Well, the rain might have finally taken a break. And this section of Howry Creek is even more intimate than the one on the other side of the portage.
Looks like a beaver dam lift over here. Well, other side of the beaver dam here. Look at all that work. My goodness. Thousands of sticks, I'm sure. Okay, beavers. Gotta get going. I've had to pick up the pace a little bit. I've got to chill. And today is definitely a fall feeling. Uh, it's probably 12 or 13 degrees and everything's wet and I'm just getting a little bit of a chill on here. So whenever that happens, I just speed up the paddle stroke and it tends to go away. I've still got quite some distance to do on this creek before I reach open water. So I'm gonna try to pick things up. I can feel there's a wind. I just hope it's in my favor once I re reach Charleston Lake. finished paddling Howry Creek and I'm now staring out onto Charlton Lake which is the lake that I put in on and the lake that I need to paddle across to get back to my car but I wanted to recap this trip and just say what a magnificent trip it was a trip that I maybe put off for too long but a trip that I finally got done and I'm just so delighted to have done it I mean you start off on Charlton which is a bit of a teaser like with cottages and some rocky outcrops from there, you do a hairpin turn and you paddle all the way down Frood, which I believe is about seven kilometers. But as soon as you round that corner, you see a sign of what's to come. You can see the mountains in the distance and the lake tapers toward the end. So seven kilometers down lake, 1,700 meters across the portage. You look at that eagle. Okay. Um, 1,700 meters across the portage. And then you come upon a movie set, a movie set that is Grace Lake. and almost by design, islands dotting everywhere, the incredible mountains in the background and the mist and the light and the shadow and the colors. I mean, my God, I wish I had two days to spend on that lake. And then waking up in the morning on the second day with, oh my goodness, all that soupy fog, which, I mean, it got everywhere, but just an amazing feeling to wake up and just watch the lake kind of unfold as 
islands came into focus, bluffs came into focus. It was just a magical morning. And then I got to paddle across Grace while it was clear and see all of the bluffs and the colors in their actual form, not hidden by mist or fog. And from there into Nelly, Nelly with the crystal clear waters and the autumn colors and the gale force winds. Regrettably, I couldn't make it all the way down Nelly, but I camped on her shores and I took a look down her and then decided it was time to head on to Murray. So Nelly, we'll have to wait till next time. And Murray is just a perfect little bay of a lake, a short paddle from the portage to the campsite. And then today paddling down Howry Creek, which is just my favorite type of intimate paddling. And to see those river otters, I mean, I saw them twice. The first time I saw them, I only had the GoPro out because it's been raining all morning. And I was cursing myself, so I brought the big camera out and uh, I get a little bit further down the river and well, there they were. So I got a couple of shots of them, I hope. Anyway, that's gonna be it for me. What an amazing trip, all kinds of weather. Didn't really see anybody except a couple of people in a canoe at a far distance and really just a lovely four days. Anyway, thank you so much for coming along and hope to see you on the next one.